Today on the show, I'm happy to have Masood Alabash. He's the CEO of Omadeus. It's an AI and tech company that he's now starting up, but this is one of many businesses that you've had over the years. So how many exits have you been through at this point, Masood? This is my fourth startup. And so I've had three exits. So it's my third software technology startup, and it's a, a pretty interesting high tech on uh, a different angle on AI. So before getting into this particular business around the AI sector, you said you had an exit in 2004 and then also in 2018? Correct. I was actually at, uh, an, uh, at an exit of uh, one of the software companies I started in uh, healthcare that was focused on selling the information systems to college health centers. And the company was called Medicat. It's uh, still around today. It was uh, um, purchased by a, a private equity in they, we, Medicaid is still the number one provider of healthcare systems to all the universities and colleges around the country. And in uh, around late nineties, uh, as I was developing that company, I started another company during the internet uh, times. I had some ideas about, uh, um, my background is computer science and electrical engineering. And so I had uh, some, uh, ideas about distributed processing. So I came up with this model, then built a company around that in the healthcare space, but focused on physicians. It's a kind of technology they called cloud computing today. It was about building applications over, over the internet. My background, even though I'm a curious uh, uh, entrepreneur and interested in uh, all things business, the technology business, but uh, it, my passion is really technology and how it's evolving and how you can uh, turn it into tools that uh, are uh, impactful for uh, greater society. You've had multi-million dollar exits. When you start a new business, do you have that end in mind already? It, yeah, it's interesting because when you're younger, you're like, honestly, you're thinking about success in terms of financial success for sure. But as you gain those marks, uh, your uh, side changes, your, of course, the financial success is important. And if you don't make money, you're not going to survive. That's just oxygen for every business. Cash flow is oxygen for any business. But your goal becomes really much more, for me right now, I want to make a much larger impact on, as I have before. And the current company is about three years old and it's a very big idea. And um, we're pretty convinced this is going to be a unicorn. This is a multi-billion dollar opportunity and it's going to impact every piece of software that you know. And the, the, the projections we make is that Okay, here's, I, I tell you, but every software that's right now in use in every corporate setting, whether it's HR or electronic medical record, some sort of manufacturing uh, automation software, they all need to be redesigned, rewritten. And that's how impactful it is. And if you think that's less than possible, surprising, no, historically, we've done it twice already. We did it back in the 80s, uh, started when computers were very intimidating and hard to understand and hard to program. We changed our model of programming from just these old text-based stuff. A lot of your young audiences never heard about this. Maybe they should look it up. But a lot of oldies like me remember how tough it was. Computers were only usable by uh, computer people. But then the graphical user interfaces came in and we rewrote all of our old software to make it pretty and, and usable for the average person, as you see today. And we did it again during the internet times. We moved from local area network type of uh, software architecture to what they call cloud computing today. And we ended up having to write all of our programs in, for this new platform. And so the way we see AI and the success of AI is popularized by large language models like GPT and a bunch of other tools like Cloud AI, which recently beat OpenAI's ChatGPT on every uh, measure uh, just a few days ago. They, the, the utilization of these tools are, I, I, I equate it to sniper shooting, like tools here. That's great. Let's just summarize this. Let's do all of our frequently asked questions, push it in there and, and replace some uh, support agents. Those are good. Those are great. Or, or mimic somebody's voice or uh, audio video. They're all amazing, but they're nothing compared to what's about to come. And what's about to come is a major revolution in the building all of our software. We're going to make our software intelligent. Our software, as we use them, whatever they are, whether it's an accounting system or an HR system or electronic medical records, they're all dumb. And we've come up with a new architecture that fuses 
LLMs and AI into the traditional logic. And that's going to impact the world. That's what really excites me. It's such a big undertaking. Did you uh, build a, sh a big team for this business? Originally, we did, actually. So it's interesting because a lot this idea started back in 2016 or uh, around the end of 2016. As a CEO, I was an, an entrepreneur and a, a curious uh, tech uh, person. I was always really... Uh, enamored with this problem of as you start a company by yourself, everything goes well, but you need to have other people. So you get the second per person, third person. As you add more people, your capacity increases, but the problems start occurring and, and you, you slow down and, and you try to dig into why. And the problem is mainly communication. So we don't have any efficient communication systems. And, and I'm not going to get into the details. I've actually written a couple of papers that were published by IEEE. I wrote one that was published about three years ago that actually discusses this problem at the depth. And it talks about the communication models that we've been using, including software, the traditional software, and then email coming into the corporate setting, and then what they call the, the enterprise social networking tools, Yammer and Slack and Microsoft Teams. So I cover all that and how the evolution of technology and communications, how they came into the corporate setting and the problems that they set out to solve and they can't solve. And that the reason why they don't scale. And now we've got this monstrous problem that we've got information in our traditional software tools. And then we have information in our email. We have in, information in channel silos and Slack. And they're all spread out. Now we've got AI coming here. And so AI with the current large language model, they're like vacuum cleaners. The basic technology is they, let me just suck all this data and then just I'll try to make sense of it and just give you answers. Cute, but that's not going to solve the fundamental problem, which is really the construct of, of human organizations with uh, workflows that are very intricate and the information exchange, that's quite complex and, and it, it requires traditional deterministic logic. And so that's why we developed them the way we did. And LLMs are not going to be able to just solve any of those problems in this model. So we, I wrote a second paper on this, which was published, I think in January. And I've presented this in, we had the honor to be uh, invited to present this idea at the uh, Computer Science, Computer Engineering Conference. And we actually won the Innovation Award uh, there, which talks about really the new model of integrating deterministic traditional programs with the probabilistic large language model engines, but in a very interesting way, such that uh, we don't make big models, we make thousands, if not millions of little models that get embedded into logic. And they basically convert your traditional deterministic programs into intelligent software in a way that users can interact with that software using natural language. And the actual, these uh, software themselves, these imagine your apps on your phone, if they're rewritten using this scale, the interaction with these apps uh, can be done with natural language. And you could put a conductor in the middle in Amadeus, that's where the name Amadeus comes from. Uh, or it's basically it's O, we changed the Amadeus to O because it's, it, it stands for the technology object messaging and intelligent objects is, is, the, is what we call our technology. And if you put that arbiter in the middle, the user can just interact with the machine using natural language and you don't have to go flip around, try to figure out which app to use. Uh, you can just simply say, hey, I'm hungry. And your uh, machine can uh, figure out, oh, I got to talk to you, his diet app. And then I got to talk to his budget app to see how much like, we can afford to spend a day. Then I got to go talk to the restaurant app. So you find the right restaurant. It'll make that plan. And then it'll just use natural language to interact with them. And then it'll show you pictures. And so the, your computer, your mobile phone will interact with you using natural language and the items you can click on or you can talk to. So it's really the future and our technology makes the, all this possible. So you've actually assembled a team now within these three years. You have over 30, a team of over 30, right? To get this built out and really execute. We were actually a bigger team initially because for us, so this is a pretty expansive type technology. It impacts every kind of software for us. The question was, let's try to build a platform. We actually spent, uh, we had a much bigger team in, and we spent about a year trying to build a platform. And I realized this is too complex and too big for us at the time. So we did what uh, every startup has to do a few times. We pivoted. It's a favorite uh, Silicon Valley term. And we turned around, okay, we cut our team to the size because we raised the, a few million 
initially, and we had to deliver some sort of product and go to the market. And uh, we decided that the platform is too complex uh, and, and too early, and it requires a lot more resources. So we focused on building uh, just one application using this technology. And the kind of application we built is the one that I always dreamed of as a CEO of my previous company, which we had over a couple hundred, 200, oh, close to 250 people. And we were building cloud-based uh, technology software. And there was no one tool that you could manage the entire production process and integrate everybody in, like your marketing, your sales people. So we would use Jira to, to manage the developers. My marketing people would use Asana. And we had Slack and Yammer, different departments, and we had written code to integrate all this stuff together. And it still didn't work. We cobbled everything up together. It moved things along. But, and this is what, by the way, this is what every company is doing today. I just drew the picture of every software technology company uh, of a good size. But I always dreamed of an integrated system that was intelligent. It could bring in the, the support people, the marketing people, the implementation people, because your front Customer facing people have the most knowledge about the product that you're making, not your programmers. The programmers don't care, actually, a lot of them, right? So, how do you bring everybody on one, one roof? So, we actually built that my ideal project management, collaboration, communication, documentation, all in one tool. And we call that the tool at Omedeus as well. And it's focused for, it's an enterprise product and it's focused for these technology companies. But right now we're in the middle of creating a mini version of that for average individuals. And it's going to be out uh, probably in about a month where you will be able to manage your daily tasks and collaborate on it with your classmates or your friends, or if you have a small team or a small company, you can download it. It works similar to WhatsApp. It'll look like WhatsApp, but it has AI embedded in it. And everything you touch AI is there. It watches you and you can create assignments and assign it to yourself, share that with other people. And those assignments become intelligent objects and they become very intelligent. They know who they are. They know who created them. They know who they should collaborate with, but they get those commands from the creator, essentially. So you end up with these intelligent entities inside your WhatsApp, if you will. But it's an amazing tool that once it comes out and uh, your audience can go to our website and uh, sign up for it. And when it's ready, they'll get an email and they can try it for free. That's amazing. Is, is this already out in the enterprise, at the enterprise level? The enterprise one, yes. Yep. The enterprise is we just finished our piloting. We have a couple of major uh, clients actually on this. So we're in the uh, post-pilot stage and, and University of Slovenia actually is one of our uh, clients. And we have another big companies and Indian companies that I think they're about 300 people and they've been using it for the last eight months and uh, they've turned into paying clients. <laughs> But now we're actually at the stage where we're about to raise money to build the marketing and sales machine to go after that enterprise market. And at the same time, we're creating a, a small uh, mini version of it for average individuals uh, to get out there, to get the, uh, the utilization of and to give a flavor to the average people of what AI can really do when you mix it up with traditional logic. I'm very interested to see the average user version of this. And, and I know our listeners will be too. So we'll make sure to share a link, everybody, so you can check that out. So I want to thank you, Masood, for coming on the show and everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe. I'm your host, Chad Galecki. We'll see you next time.